Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Keeping It Real Fishing here. Thank you so much for checking out the video. And uh, today, just a quick video, guys, a little tutorial. If you have a Sports Pal canoe, um, I've kind of pushed this canoe on my page. I got this one here that I'm about to show you about 10 years ago. And uh, it is due for a foam lining replacement on the bottom, uh, as well as those side sponsons there. So uh, I've really advocated for this canoe. It's a, it's a great craft. I've recommended it to a lot of people. I know a lot of you have it and you're very happy with it. Super lightweight super stable it's it's built to be a sporting canoe but uh anyway guys i just want to show you today <clears throat> how to replace this liner it's my first time doing it but it's pretty straightforward and i just want to walk you through uh the process now uh it's kind of intuitive you could probably figure it out on your own but there is uh instructions uh, online i believe it's castlecraft there's a couple sites that sp uh, sell sports pals and they really go into detail into how to do this but let me just show you where i'm at here in the disassembly process all right guys, so you can see I already stripped out the original liner. To strip out the liner, you're gonna have to take out all the ribs. And uh, it's different based on the model canoe you have. This one here is the 14 foot double-ended. So this one happens to have 23 ribs. And you can see they're smaller and they get wider and uh, smaller as you go down. Kind of looks pretty cool out here. My daughter was out here yesterday, little one, she's almost four and she thought it looked like a big dinosaur skeleton, pretty cool. Um, so you have to take those out. There is uh, a fair amount of pressure and torque on some of them and uh, they're durable uh, but you don't want to, there is a point past where you go which and you will bend out the metal. So it's like, it's a delicate balance of putting enough force behind it. If you're delicate you will not get them out. They are really in there good uh, because not only are they keeping the liner in place but they also add structural rigidity. Like this piece here, I can nearly pop free of this uh, if those aren't in place. So they really are imperative in the structural standpoint as well as keeping the liner down. So you really wanna make sure you don't damage them, uh, taking them out or, or getting them in. Uh, if by chance you do though, all these parts are available. Uh, you can order even by the rib. You can count it off and order individual ribs straight from the manufacturer. So it's pretty cool. You can get the exact parts you need for, uh, for these canoes. But um, let me show you where we're at guys. So the liner is out, as you can see. We took out those ribs carefully, and uh, here's the new liner. You can buy the new liner in one of two configurations. You can get it pre-cut for your model. I think it was $20 cheaper, which is what I elected to do, and they sell you just a big rectangle, and then what you do is you take out your existing one, and you just lay it on top, put some weights on it, make sure it's all flat, you know, and then you just take a, uh, a knife and trace it out. Uh, really, really simple to cut. I just used a standard. Uh, box cutter and it was one two three it went right through it very very easily so that's that you cut the new liner to shape and then um i don't have the old liner i could just roll in the clip here and show you how bad it was looking i had holes here from where my feet were and even parts that i hadn't been on it was very porous and just kind of decrepit after about 10 years of use so uh, this is actually what it looked like these are the side sponsons but that's what the inside looked like too it was all kind of like mangled like this and just real real rough and and not really doing its job as it used to not not as uh, buoyant and this is what a new one looks like it's very smooth very different consistency when it's not aged and the same is true here of the inner liner so uh so those old ones are going and the new sponsons and liner is going to go in and last part guys i just want to show you you may have noticed here there's pieces of tape it's really, really imperative. It's critical that you put those ribs back exactly where you found them because the sizing of the rib, the sizing from there to there, I guess you could say the diameter, you gotta get it right because of course the canoe is tapered. So if you're trying to fit it in an inch forward or an inch back from where you took it from, you're gonna fight, fight, fight. And they're not easy to get in to begin with, but if you're not putting it in the right spot, there's no way you're gonna get it in. So key, key step here, is to put pieces of tape that line up directly with where that rib was. You want it to be straight in line, put one here, and put one on the opposite side exactly where that rib had been placed. And then if you notice here, the last thing guys, I just numbered them. This way when I go to my big pile, I know I'm grabbing the exact correct one. And I put R just as a reference so that when I put the liner in, I'm putting the right side of the liner in on the right side and not flipping it. I don't personally know if that matters, but I just want it to be as easy as possible. So I want to reference everything the same. So for instance, this liner here, you can see I have a one R on that. So that, that R means that this side of the bracket came from this side of the canoe and not 
vice versa. Like I said, I don't think that matters, but if there's any irregularities in the bend here, you know, I don't want that to be, make my life any more difficult. So that's it, guys. You put in the pieces of tape where they came from, label them so you're putting in the right rib, and do it all the way down. And then just do the same here to all your ribs. I have all my ribs. Just a piece of masking tape and label them with the number. And like I said, I just want to reference the side of it. So that's it. So I'm going to get started now, putting in the liner and putting these things in. Uh, I know it's not easy. I've heard from other people it takes a while to do. But really imperative that you get it right for that structural stability. And uh, listen, you know, you do it once, you do it right the first time. Then you don't have to worry again about it again for like another six, seven, eight years. So. Let's get started. everybody so there we go that wasn't too bad it only took me maybe uh, I don't know three four minutes uh, but at first I thought I was gonna have to recut it because it really looks like there's a lot extra and it's tough because you kind of have to like there's nothing really to getting traction on here and what you have to do is tuck one side in first you're tucking it in actually up underneath that lip so it's going all the way up sorry you have to tuck it up underneath this lip right you do that all the way to one side and then you kind of work to get your other side back and uh, it was really bubbly i thought i was gonna have to cut off a couple inches you can see a couple bubbles here but that's all going to get compressed when i put in the ribs but uh yeah i guess it's pretty important that you get that cut accurate from your previous from your previous liner but uh yeah that was pretty simple just squeezing it into place no problem okay guys and so we begin um starting off with the first rib here at the back of the canoe and uh, as I was taking these out, I noticed the, one, the smaller ones, like the first like five or six towards the back and all the way towards the front were a lot easier than the middle ones. The foam in the front and the back was a lot more uh, squished and pushed down just because of my being there and a front occupant being there. And the middle just, you know, not getting the being stepped on, just having our gear in it. So um, I don't know how hard these are going to be to get in, but uh, let's see. Let's see how bad this is. match it up right there I'm gonna tuck in one side here there we go now here he goes fight the good fight Whew, I'm not gonna lie guys this is not doesn't go in easy All right, everybody, quick update here. So you can see I got four of them in. I'm not gonna lie, man, I knew it was tough, but it is, it is tough stuff. You're gonna get a workout doing this. Uh, those four liners there, it's taken me about three to four minutes to get each one in. Uh, it's just, it's hard to push them because they just dig into that foam. They want a grip and yet you're trying to push them into place. Um, the instructions that I found online were basically to line everything up right you line everything up and then it's like you put one side underneath and then you push down the other side and you do something with a screwdriver to pop it in uh from my quick experience here i cannot even come close <laughs> there is so much overhang i can't even come close to pop it in the other side so let me just show you i don't know if this is the right way but it's the only way that i'm able to uh successfully get in let me show you what i'm doing in case you guys want to tackle this as well and you have uh, you also have a problem doing it as per the manufacturer's instructions let me show you uh this other way all right guys so let me show you what i'm doing here what i'm doing is i'm putting in one side first once one of my sides is really gnarly and the other one's a clean cut i don't think that matters but the side that i referenced um oh sorry that's hitting the uh, tripod there i'm putting in this side first i don't know if it matters either side i'm getting it in all the way and then it just becomes really like a 
a will of a, a feat of strength or a will of determination, it's not going to want to go in, right? You're going to have that. You're going to have, even pushing it down, you have about a good inch, inch and a quarter until you're going to be able to clear this lip here. So what I'm doing is I'm coming in and pushing this down as far as I can into the foam. And then I'm just kind of angling it here. Kind of going past, I'm coming back the other way. And then trying to bring it back like that and get your fingers out of there. <laughs> now here's the part where it's like, it's digging in so deep into the foam, you can't just slide this into place. Like all it wants to do is dig. So this is just, again, just got to elbow grease it and that's that's what I'm going to be doing for the next minute or so is trying to eke out another uh, inch or so here into this foam. I have an idea about getting some uh, silicone spray and just putting a little bit of spray right here where I need to slide it. I think that might might uh, aid me greatly but uh, anyway guys that's the way that I'm doing it. Ultimately it's going to get done. It's not as per the manufacturer's recommendations but for the life of me I can't see how you quote unquote pop these things into place. There's so much overhang here. And even if you put your body weight on it, like I was stepping on it, I had all my weight on it, it doesn't make a difference. And you just can't, I can't get it in. So that's just uh, my methodology here, guys. All right, let me show you guys something here. This is, uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're about three quarters of the way done. Let me just show you the obstacle that I keep having. So what I'm doing is I'm wedging this side underneath first, and then I'm bringing this side under, and I'm kind of bending it forward and pushing it down as hard as I can. I like put all my weight into it, pushing it down, but I still have to angle it forward, and then I'm getting it underneath, and I'm bringing this end back. Then that leaves me with that. Let me back up so you can see. It leaves me with that thing bowed out like that. Now it's not permanent, I didn't bend the metal yet. Then what I'm doing is I'm going in there with that silicone spray. I'm spraying in this edge here really liberally, getting a lot of silicone on there. Cause it's digging into the foam. So it's not like it slips right along. Silicone or no sli silicone, right there, it's digging into the foam. So it doesn't want to slide no matter what. So banging it really just moves the foam too. That's what makes it so hard is that you can't just slide it up there like it just doesn't want to go. But I'm spraying the heck out of it with silicone. I'm banging it and then, you know, just working it, working it, working it, trying to get it straight. So that's what I've been doing thus far. Thus far, we're pretty good. There's another one. That one before it, I had a really hard time with. I even came back to it. I still can't get that one right. No matter how much I tap that section, it's just not straightening out. So I might try a little bit more, but that one might just end up staying like that. But that was really it. Most of the other ones are pretty close. I mean, functionally, they're fine. I have no doubt that the canoe is going to be uh, water worthy, but I would like to get them all perfect. You know, I just want to do it once, do it right, and then not have to think about it again. So yeah, but just these last two, we're having, we're having some issues with these over there. And I think maybe I did cut my foam a little bad because this side here, the foam was perfectly straight. But over here, the more I work down, the bigger this bunch is getting. So as I get further back, I think that that's going to roll out even further. But uh, hey, I'm not taking it out to cut it again now, so it is what it is. But anyway, guys, that's where we stand. And I'll uh, check back in with you. Should be done soon. I don't know, about maybe like 20 minutes or so.
All right, everybody, so stage one is complete. The liner is in, the ribs are in. I might fine tune a few of them just to get them a little bit more straight, but for the most part, we're done. I'll just show you how that turned out. I actually messed up on one. I put all my uh, masking tape things, what is it, 15? Yeah, that one. I put it on the wrong side. I, I don't really know that that makes so much of a difference, but. Um, so yeah, they're all in, mostly straight. Some of them went in pretty easy. Like really easy. Some of them only took me like about a minute. Others I was working on for like seven or eight minutes, maybe even ten. Like they just would not get into place. I see some of them. There's a little bit of a bigger gap than others. I mean, I, I don't know exactly. I think they should be all straight. But the main thing is I'm confident in where the ends are because that's where the tape is. I put the tape exactly where the ends are. Like right here is a good example. Like there's my tape. But I think the... Um, the rib is kind of angled this way. It should be more straight up and down right there. So those are a few things I'm going to kind of knock into place, just get them seated a little bit better. But on the whole, I think we're all set. And obviously it looks 10 times better. <laughs> so uh, next step is to get the side sponsons. Uh, I noticed that there's no holes in them. So uh, I'm going to have to make the corresponding holes where they mount. Uh, I have all new hardware. Just an FYI guys, they had uh, they had asked me, do you want new hardware? And I was like, nah, I guess so, but you should really get it. Cause in taking off my old hardware, like it's shot. There's a, a couple of the um, screws that they use there aren't, I guess they're not galvanized, they're stainless and they're really, really rusted bad. So if you replace your sponsons, make sure you get uh, new hardware because the old stuff you're not going to want to reinstall so uh, we're going to do that next and uh, I'll let you know how that goes hey guys I'm just getting ready to put those sponsons on and uh, you don't have to do this but the way it'll come to you from the factory is the outer washer here now that's that's actually used for compression you need this it keeps the sponson on and it also um, adds compression on the inside of the canoe uh, against the foam uh, just an additional thing to keep everything together and to keep things from shifting so it's it's not just for aesthetic you definitely want these in there but um, the outer one that'll be against the outer foam sponson is black and the inner one is silver these are the ones on the inside of the boat so I mean you don't have to to paint them but just so you know when you get the new hardware they're all silver kind of would be nice if they painted them black but um there's, I just counted, there's 36, 10, 20, 30, and 6, so that means we're going to take 18 of them, and I'm just going to put two coats of, uh, nothing's crazy, just some flat black paint on that. Uh, this way, you know, it just doesn't stand out on the, uh, when it's on the sponsons, it, it just blends in. So I'm uh, going to do that part right now. Okay, next we're going to set up these sponsons. Uh, the bottom one is the new one, and there's the top one. And that's the idea, man. Just lay the old one next to the new one. What I'm trying to do is just reference the uh, holes. I think that'll be the easiest way. Just to line them up and, and poke them through. I uh, just got a uh, skinny screwdriver here that has uh, just a little bit of a larger diameter than the screws that are about to go through. And we're just going to poke out those holes right now. I know uh, this is dead simple guys, but I'll just mention it uh, in the for the sake of the tutorial. I just got to make a quick pilot here going the other way, being that it is a new liner. You don't know what's happening on the other side. So you just got to stick your screwdriver through. This way you can get your uh, screws through. So we're just going to do that all the way down. One, two, three. Another thing I'd like to mention here guys, uh, I just... Uh, I didn't just notice, but it's pretty self-explanatory. This piece is not symmetrical. So this is the skinny part, and this is the wider part. The wider part goes towards the canoe like that, and it, it tapers down uh, to the outer edge. You'll notice when you take off your old one, but mine are kind of so decrepit. Yeah, I guess you could still tell. But uh, again, just going over everything here, guys. Wide edge towards the canoe we got a phrase that we like to say uh, where I work because it happens all the time it's a uh, nothing's easy 
nothing's easy, man. Nothing's easy. And so here we are. I thought I was just going to slap on these sponsons. The hard part is done. This is probably the hardest part. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, I'm not happy about the choice of hardware here, guys. So what you're doing is we got our little screw going through and you have your large washer on the inside and that's pretty much it so you're pressing against that washer it's pressing pressing against the foam keeping everything intact there and then you have that little pilot hole we just made in the foam you slide this on should be an easy deal right let me just try to do this hold on okay so there we go that's where it's supposed to be this is pushed on where's the screw <laughs> It's countersunk right now about a quarter of an inch. And because this foam is so fresh and it's so resilient, you can't just compress this with your finger. Uh, and particularly the fact that coming from this side, you have to compress the whole area with a washer. So it's one thing if I just had to push it in with my thumb, but I'm gonna say this is tough stuff. Even if you're just doing a small area, it really has a lot of fight to it. But when you're trying to spread it over something flat, good luck compressing that. So. I'm very disappointed with this hardware. I would like it to just be, it just needs to be about a quarter or a half an inch longer because right now, no matter, I can feel it in there, but it doesn't come through. So I literally, shy of having a good way of compressing this, I'm gonna have to go out and get screws. I don't know what size those are. Those are maybe two and a half, two and three quarters, uh, stainless steel, uh, so that's a little bit more expensive. I'm gonna have to get screws that actually make it through that I could just put the thing on and tighten it all down. I'm pretty disappointed with this choice of hardware. I understand that at the end of the day, everything has to be compressed. That's the idea, but don't make it such that it doesn't even poke through and you can't get started. That's a, that's a faulty, faulty design there. Let me just give you guys one more look at that. It's a better angle. All right, so we're in there, we're flush kind of compressed and then okay so that's all the way through right and you can see if we line this up you could see how kind of woefully short it comes hold that with my foot make sure this side is all the way through yep that's as far as it's gonna go and you can see that's just that's just dumb <laughs> there's no way you're gonna be able to push in that foam with that big old whatever that is, two inch washer to be able to access those threads. So uh, that sucks, man. I have to take a trip to the hardware store. Hey, what's up everybody? We're back, it's a different day and uh, I got one word for you. Eureka! <laughs> Let me show you what, what we got going on here. All right, we're making progress. We managed to get these things in. And what I'd like to do here, guys, this is the beauty of social media and YouTube. I know this is why I come to YouTube, is to have someone else who's done something tell me the shortcut as to how to do it more effectively, and that's what I'm about to do. If there's a better way, somebody chime in, but I don't see any of the videos uh, explaining how to do this at all. So um, for those of you, when you're, it's time to do it, try this. So here's the problem, guys. Um, I know I've lamented it in the last clip, but again, this foam is just very, very resilient, and you cannot compress it. I repeat, it's not a matter of weakness or anything else. I don't care who you are. You are not going to be able to, with these washers on, it just spreads out the force over too great an area. No human being is going to be able to hold this side while compressing this side and that side and get a nut on it. I don't care if you have a second set of hands, you're just not going to be able to do it. You need tools. Here's what you need specifically. This is the key ingredient. I just ran up to Harbor Freight because I didn't want to spend a lot, and I got two of these deep throat, ha ha ha, deep throat, eight inch uh, C clamps. And you do need the eight inch ones. They had five inch ones there, six inch ones, and um, you, do, you want the extra depth because you need to get over the gun wall and down to the uh, bolt. So you definitely want the eight inch model, uh, 699 per clamp. So you're gonna drop 14 bucks Consider it like a special service tool specifically for this, but C-clamps are good to have in general. You're gonna need a uh, 3 8 inch socket. You're gonna need, you really do need this part though. Um, you need a, a screwdriver that's roughly the same, a little bit larger uh, in diameter than the screws that you're gonna put through. 
This is going to serve as the pilot. We already made the holes in the foam, but you're going to see that I'm going to use this as kind of a, a holding mechanism kind of uh, to get everything in place. And then when I retract it, I'm just going to slide the screw in. I'll show you what I mean. So you need one of these to be reasonably long to get through both sides of it. I think this one here is probably about five inches. And uh, you're going to need an empty vitamin water bottle. And without question, you're going to need a pink bucket to sit on. Specifically pink, no other color. <clears throat> As once you have all those things in place, you are ready to start. So let me, it's pretty self-explanatory guys once you got the C-clamps, but let me just show you how it goes down. All right guys, what you're going to start by doing is taking your, uh, your outer washer here and your screwdriver. We've already made some pilot holes here, which isn't really imperative. You could just kind of bring it through at this point, but it helps. So, um, pilot hole right there, screws, driver's coming out, we're just going to bring it right through there. Oops, let me get my washer on first, there we go. Alright, through the foam, through the hole in the canoe, and in. Now this is where I was saying you want to have a, um, a screwdriver the appropriate length, because you want to make sure that your screwdriver goes through on the other side. Let me just show you that. There we go. All right, so your screwdriver's through. Now on this side, as you might imagine, we're gonna put our other washer, okay? And that's all we're gonna do right now. Now we're gonna compress the whole thing. Enter the C-clamps. All right, everybody, so you definitely need two. I thought I might be able to get away with one, and I tried that at the outset. But one, it just, it puts so much, um, you know, lopsided pressure that it actually doesn't compress it sufficiently to be able to get the, uh, the nut started on the other side. So you do need to put equal amounts of pressure. So one here, and you can see it's kind of sliding off. So what you have to do is put on the other one. And to any of you guys who work with tools, this is nothing, nothing new, but for anybody who's not familiar, I'm just walking you through it, man. This takes a little while here because these things bang against each other, so we're going to do like these little half turns and then pull the, the lever here through. And that's pretty much it, guys. You just I'll probably fast forward this part. We're just going to compress it down. And now that we have some tension on this side, I'm going to compress this a little more. Then I can scoot this guy over a little bit because it's not going to be as cockeyed. And we'll just go back and forth, back and forth until it's reasonably compressed. And then we'll throw the screw through, the screw in that hole. And um, it should poke through and we'll put on our nut. This is a time consuming part, guys. Not that it takes that long, but when you multiply it by every single one that you have to put on just this back and forth putting equal amounts of pressure on these these washers all right so there we go that should be good let me show you where we stand okay looking from this side we still have our screwdriver in there keeping that washer exactly in place where we're going to put our screw through on this side here we have compressed the uh the washer i didn't realize i was zoomed in there and so now what we're going to do is, this is our placeholder, we're just going to slide this guy out. And the tension of the C-clamps, of course, will keep the nut, or the uh, washers, in place. And these go, the head goes on the inside of the canoe. There we go. And there it is. Now we just get that started and we're going to take off our clamps and then we can just tighten the whole thing down. At this point everybody just grab that uh, 3 8 inch socket or if you just have a nut driver, whatever it is, just 3 8 or 9 millimeter uh, is close enough if you're using, uh, if you're using metric. And uh, yeah, just hold it in. Tighten her up. Uh, 
I noticed uh, when I got the canoe, they didn't have a whole lot of threads coming through. Again, these are nylon uh, nuts here retaining it. It's not like they didn't have their screw coming out, even like an eighth of an inch, they just had it even. Um, and you can see that just a couple more rotations on it really does compress the foam uh, visually quite a bit. So I, I'm just matching what the manufacturer did and I have the outer end of the screw just come flush with, uh, with the locking nut. So I went a little bit too far, I'm just gonna back it off. Because again, it does compress uh, really fast. And I don't think that washer will eat through, or not eat through, but tear through the foam. But just matching the way it was in the factory because I never had a problem when it was like that. There we go. Screw is flush with the nut. You can see it actually, you know, backed it off a little bit and it, uh, it looks factory now. So there we go. That's, uh, that's the secret, guys. You know what? In retrospect, I said you needed the 8 inch, but as I was doing it, I realized I had probably about a good 3 inches extra at the top. So if you have a 6 inch, uh, you still need a deep clamp, but if you have a 6 inch one, 6 inches of clearance here, that would totally work as well. You don't need the full 8 inch model. Okay, everybody, just finished up, and uh, let me show you how it all came together. I'm just realizing now as I, as I step back, my sponsons are a little cockamamie in some places. I guess where I put my little pilot hole through the foam was, was not even, so you can see a little dip there. Uh, whatever, it's no big deal, man. And I could always just redo it. If that's some kind of thing that drives you crazy. This side here, looks like I did a better job on. That's more straight. Uh, yeah, and so the uh, inside, getting the hardware seated, once I figured out how to do it, it was pretty straightforward. Just a little time consuming to keep buttoning down these clamps. And this is definitely the key piece that you're going to need. You just need two deep throat clamps. It looks to me to be about a minimum, these are 8 inch ones again, but you need looks to be about a minimum of 6 inches to get around everything here. To get, be able to get down there like that. And uh, that's pretty much it guys. You saw the rest of it. Not difficult, just time consuming. Getting the ribs in place, if you noticed I've changed yet again. It's another day, I just, I have little bits of time where I'm chipping away at this. So this has really been like a three day project for me. Just an hour here, an hour and a half there. Uh, but getting those ribs in place was the most difficult part by far. I don't know a hack for that. I couldn't see one aside from just spraying with us a little bit of silicone, but that really didn't help. And I don't know if these things are shifting while under pressure, but now that I look at it today, I feel like a lot of these things are kind of canted like this, more so than they were when I finished the other day. So I'm going to keep a close eye on that and see if these things are shifting because um, obviously we need to put them back. So not like it was from the factory, of course not perfect, but we're not working with uh, the methodology of the factory. Uh, but all in all guys, that's, that's what you are gonna have to do when it's time to replace the liner on your sports pal and the sponsons i hope that uh i hope that helps some of you to uh get a few shortcuts and uh, make it easier if you have any questions just leave them down below in the comments and i'll be sure to get back to you thanks for watching